Hello, welcome to my glass of happiness and I am still welcoming myself from the long given break. Someone asked me, did I intend to take a break or why did I take the break? What was the purpose of the break or where have I been? No, I have not been under a rock hiding. I've only been taking each day at a time. That's all. That's all I can say. Today on my glass of happiness, I just want to share with you, I think, a bit more about my grieving process. Which, if I'm to look at it at a high level, I really think I've been grieving just out there in the public. Because I didn't, I don't think there's a particular place anyone goes to grieve. I don't think there's a definite emotion that is of if you're grieving. Oh, for those of you who don't know, I lost both my parents in such a short period of time. And I wasn't really so. I never used to consider myself someone so close to my parents, all about my parents. All. But now that they are not there, I am being forced to make sure I understand myself. Because at the back of your mind, you see, even if you're rebellious to your parents or not, at the back of your mind, when you're doing something, in your head, there is like a marking guide where you're seeing your parents putting excess in everything you are doing, judging you. Or they are putting take, take, take. When you get a promotion at work, even if you don't tell them, if you don't, don't call them. Some of the reasons why you have a bounce in your step when you're going home, there's that kid in you of at school when you do well and you can't wait to get home and your parents say well done. So even if your parents are not home to say well done, there's just that thing of when you do well, when you don't do well, when you need motivation. Your parents, the people that born you, just come to mind. But losing my parents so quickly has forced me to understand myself, to know for sure, are my ideologies my ideologies? Is that what I stand for? Because if I'm being honest, I really used to love, Maraga love. Like, it was so easy to love because what did I know anyway? Like, love, to give. I was so happy. Immediately, everything was positive. Eh, and from nothing to you are the queen of where Everything was so fine. And then I, I, I would keep quiet and think, eh, my parents were so, so proud. <laughs> now when good things happen, I am happy and it's over. I can't explain to you the emptiness in it. But also, sorry, this is not supposed to be sad, by the way. The one thing I feel like I get from understanding myself and attempting to understand myself, I am not apologetic about eating life. Oh, mama, 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 when my parents died, <laughs> eating life became a must. I don't apologize. Oh, for what? My friend. If I wake up in the morning and I am alive, that is a good day. It's a good day, whether it is a Monday or a Wednesday, it is a good day. It's an attitude that, that has made me have color in my life. Recently, I'm in love with color. And I've noticed that just choosing to step out with particular colors puts you in a mood. You know, bright colors make you actually happy. I don't know about you, but it's working for me, so maybe you should try it. Yeah, I was sitting here about grieving. These days, I find myself very unapologetic. Yeah? And it, it's confusing to people who consider themselves to know you. You know, people who've been in your life a very long time, your brothers. Like my siblings look at me from a distance of, is that who she has always been? Or is she... Grieve, like should we wait so that our old aunt comes back but for instance when my father died the morning my father died i usually wake up in the morning and make posts i'll post something and then go back to sleep because i know there's traffic in the morning and then wait to respond so i woke up that morning and i posted a picture where for the first time my breasts were out um, it, a picture in red. I looked like I'm serving today, Banangi. 
<laughs> actually to make fun of man my sister shine told me that that picture is one that killed dead <laughs> <laughs> i swear i swear you guys <laughs> you can laugh and don't feel bad i remember the first thing she told me when i saw when shine in ibusha the first time i saw her she was like mm, ready in red that's how you kill it <laughs> i'm like Okay, if I was weak hearted, I would have died because I was still just trying to process him going and I'm being told he saw my breast. I said, No, why am I still in this world? Let me just go. My children have doomed. So, while I'm saying that my loss of my parents has given me confidence in who I am, guys, please don't take my word for it because I'm still figuring myself out. That I can say it confidently. Half the time, I'm simply existing. And in all honesty, now that's the kind of grieving I actually wanted to talk about today. Allowing yourself to exist amid these no special events. You know, you wake up in the morning and there's no topic for the day. No, you don't know how the day is going to end, but it's okay. You, you need to wake up and realize that, first of all, you have woken up. Someone said, <laughs> the someone was announcing that someone died in their sleep and said they woke up and found that they were dead. No, they didn't wake up. They were dead. So if you wake up and actually realize that you have woken up, that's already something to be very grateful about, my friend. Eh? That's how I exist these days. And then when you wake up, sometimes you wake up and you don't have a plan, but you are lucky you have rent, you're healthy, but you have such a bad day because of everything you think about that you cannot do now for me i think that's that's the kind of grieving that god saved me from i've been in moments where i wake up and i am so proud of myself for waking up because i expected to break down so much i expected this loss to complete me and finish me. I expected to be lost in confusion, not knowing what to do for Selassie. Selassie gets a pimple and I look at them like, isn't this the devil telling me something? Like small, small things. I expected myself to lose at every corner. That I had moments of waking up and I'm like, I'm still okay? So I've learned how to enjoy the nothingness that allows you to think and grow. That's how I have grieved. And I can't talk about my grieving without talking about my friends. <laughs> you people, <laughs> you people, choose your friends wisely. Eh? Me, I was not wise. So my friends turned it into a road trip, coming to bury my parents. Like, okay, the last time was burying daddy. Eh, if you went to the Snapchats of my friends, hmm? Segu, big segus, only, only, all my girlfriends came to bury. And they were in a van, they turned it into a pate. I remember there's a time we reached Muhanga, somewhere going to the village. I, I joined them, of course, you know. I can't miss out on the pate to go and send off our parents. <laughs> and I remember we stopped at a petrol station. And they were saying this thing of, shut up! And all of us, uh, Andy bend over! And it went viral. And they were like, nah, yeah. Then I remember when we were burying my mom, we danced on her grave. Why? Because. <laughs> Trust me, mommy went to heaven. She saw us dancing and said, you see? <laughs> God, you see, I've raised my children. Because we knew, like, what's the point of believing in God and dying when you're saved? And you leave people crying that you have God. Like, why are we believing in God anyway? So, ah, man, grieving. But my friends, You really don't know. You really don't know who your friends are. Did you somewhere and you're like, even you, you have come. Even you, at the back. I was like, is there a sensor? I'm like, let me get a register and write these people. There's someone, like, even some who are like, I used to love you, I'd forgotten about. Even you, you have come. Hey, man, you gave back. I, I realized that. You want to get by your reunions. <laughs> then you meet people that you're catching up with and then you forget about the fact that you've lost. You then gain new friendships. Ah, my friends. I don't know how your friends are. I don't know how they treat you, but 
in this glass of happiness. My grieving has my friends written all over it. It's because of having amazing people like those around me that I can still afford to make you laugh. Do you know how difficult it is as a comedian to make other people laugh when you have no joy in your life? That's how we end up committing suicide because <laughs> most of the artists that have committed suicide in Hollywood, most statistically, are comedians, people in the business of making other people happy, end up killing themselves because they give so much and have nothing for themselves. So for me to talk about grieving and I forget to thank my friends for being my friends, I would be lying to myself. Um, and talking about my friends, you guys, please, I am not going to end this episode before I promise that I'm going to talk about working with your friends. That's a new dimension, you people. You lose friends and gain colleagues and lose colleagues and then have international enemies. I just, actually, in the next episode of my Glass of Happiness, I'm going to share a bit about what it feels like working with my friends. But now in this episode, I will not take you those ends. In this episode, what I really wanted you to take out of this Glass of Happiness is there's no right way, there's no sure way to grieve. Mm -mm. There's no formula. It's okay for you to grieve a way no one has ever known. Why? Because you, as a unique being, has uniquely lost someone close to you. No one has ever been in your experience. So however you choose to do it, it is okay. And in case you think you're losing it, look at how I'm doing it. You'll be fine yet I have no idea. Actually, all of us, we don't have an idea. Nobody has an idea. So it's okay for you to do it the way you're doing it, as long as you don't lose your mind. I'm so glad, however it is, I am mourning the loss of my parents, is leaving me some room to love the people around me and accept the love that they are giving me. Yeah? Ah, cheers, ninjas. I told you, these glasses of happiness are so sweet. Have you subscribed, by the way? Subscribe, guys. It's been a while. I know, but I'm back now. So please subscribe and make these conversations very interesting. I know, when we have big problems, the size of the grass continues to expand. <laughs> so, yes, next episode I'll be talking about my friends. Yeah, grieving with them and hiring them and firing them and making them and enjoying them and sisterhood. <laughs>